Options. Call options give the option holder the right to purchase an asset at a specified price, on or before a specified expiration date. A January 2, 2015 call option on Microsoft stock with an exercise price of $45 entitles its owners to purchase Microsoft stock for $45 at any time up to the expiration date of January 2, 2015. The holder of the call option is not required to exercise their option or purchase the stock. It only makes sense for the call option holder to exercise their option if the market value of the underlying stock exceeds the exercise price. This way, the option holder can purchase the stock at a price that is lower than market value and then resell it at market value. The difference between the market value and the exercise price will be the option holder's return. Options contracts must be purchased by the option holder. The price that the options contract sells for is called the premium. In order for the option holder to make a profit on their investment, the difference in the strike price and the market value must exceed the price that the option contract was purchased for. Options contracts are based off of 100 shares, however the price is quoted on a per share basis. Therefore, if the option price is quoted at $1.45, then the options contract will be purchased for $1.45 times 100 equaling $145. The options multiplier is the number of shares that the options contract represents, therefore the options multiplier is 100. When the market price of the underlying stock exceeds the option strike price, the holder can call away the stock, purchasing it for the exercise price, keeping the difference in the exercise price and the market value as the return. If the option is left unexercised, it expires and has no value. Calls provide profit when prices increase. Therefore, purchasers of call options are generally bullish on the underlying asset. In contrast to call options are put options. Put options give the option holder the right to sell the underlying asset at a specified price on or before the expiration date. A January 30, 2015 put option on Microsoft stock with an exercise price of $45 allows the option holder to sell the option on or before the expiration date for $45. If the price of the underlying asset drops below the exercise price, then the option holder can sell the stock to the put writer at the exercise price. Profits for put options are made when the value of the underlying asset decreases. As the underlying asset's value decreases, the profits are increased for the holder of the put option. When the holder of a put option exercises the option, his profits are the difference between the exercise price and the market price of the underlying asset. Here's an excerpt of call options quotations pulled from eTrade.com for Microsoft call and put options. The current price for Microsoft shares is $45.62. The strike price column is the price that option holders can exercise their option for on or before the expiration date. If they hold a call option, then the option holder can buy the underlying stock for the strike price. If they hold a put option, then they can sell the underlying stock for the strike price on or before the expiration date. The open interest column represents the number of options contracts that exist for the specified stock and the specified strike price and expiration date. The volume column is the number of options contracts traded over a specified period. The net change is the difference between the options current price and the previous day's closing price. The last column represents the latest price that the options traded for. The bid column represents the price that potential buyers of the option are offering to purchase it. The ask column is the price that current holders of the option are willing to sell it for. When the bid and ask price meet the options contracts are sold.